as opposed to the vine that we saw on the other side, this is a vine that we don't grow on a Eura V system, like I just described. This is what we call a VSP, or a vertically shoot position vine. One thing that we always have to teach growers and winemakers is that when we say vertical shoot position, there's actually a verb in positioning, and that's hard to grasp. So as these shoots grow, we need to position them physically into the canopy. And there are two ways that we can do that. The first one is we'll actually take this wire, and this is a moving foliage wire. I'm not sure if you can see that on the screen, but we can uh, lift this wire up to a certain point, and we have a little tuck hole in the, in the post here, if you can see the post here, and we can actually tuck the shoots uh, behind this wire. The second thing that we have to do is also make sure that the vines are straight because we want the shoots to be going straight up. And the advantage in this particular system, as opposed to the one we saw on the other side, this is not a spur position vineyard. Remember on the other side we saw the two spurs with each shoot growing up like this? Well, this is what we call a cane prune vineyard. And what we do with a cane prune is we actually prune back to last year's wood. You'll notice in a cane prune vineyard, this is the wood from last year and that wood has now been laid out and we're producing a bud this year from that wood. So this shoot that I'm holding here was actually a shoot with two clusters on last year. This year it's actually going to produce a shoot and this is an example of a new shoot that's coming out and you'll see the two clusters on the shoot already. We have one cluster here and another cluster here and uh, this will eventually grow into a shoot that will vertically shoot position in this particular vineyard. So this will become a shoot, this bud will become a shoot, this bud will become a shoot, and this bud will become a shoot, and those are the ones that will train in behind these moving foliage wires. The important thing about spring is that it's already forming the plant material for the following year. So here we are in the vintage of 2008 coming up, but it's already producing behind the scenes what's going to be produced in 2009. So if I was to take one of these buds off, and I'm going to pull, this is a very expensive thing I'm going to do here, I'm pulling off a shoot here that has two clusters. So this little tiny little bud, which has two clusters on it for this year, one cluster and two clusters, is obviously very small here, but each one of these shoots is going to grow up with that cluster on it. But behind the scenes, in that bud, it's already forming the, the clusters for the following year. So we can actually predict crop load, the year, bef the year before by dicing and slicing some of these tiny little buds and we can see the little cluster morphology already forming in that bud. So these are all the sort of things that we look for and we try to make sure that in the spring when we have good growth that we're supplying that vine enough energy to be thinking about what it's going to be doing in 2009 as well. And the two most important areas of the vine for that ripening period is not only the shoots and the clusters that we're forming for the vintage of 2008, but also the root development, because roots develop at two times per year, now in the spring, and then later on, just after we harvest in the fall. And we get a lot of spring growth, and we'll get a lot of shoot growth, or sorry, root growth, uh, in the soil at that time. So we really try and encourage that to occur. And in this particular vineyard, we, we use uh, sustainable viticulture, which means low input, very few sprays, in fact no sprays at all, no liquid sprays that we can, that uh, we'd have to use. And then you'll notice that the weeds are not perfectly removed, we actually used, we actually remove the weeds by hand. We'll use hand weed whackers uh, that we'll bring through here rather than using herbicides and we certainly try not to use any fungicides at all. So that's what sustainable viticulture is about and that's what we're practicing here as well. The second most important thing for us is because we're right here on the riverbed, we practice fish friendly farming and what that means is we want to protect the environment, we don't want to have any runoff from the vineyard going into the natural water resources because in the Dry Creek River this is the primo area for where steelhead and salmon come from so we certainly don't want any viticultural ingredients going down into the river and so site specific winemaking starts here using sustainable viticulture and fish friendly farming which are two of the most important ingredients to what I consider to be the future of the environment and vineyards.